Wake that ass up early in the morning. The Breakfast Club. Morning, everybody. It's DJ MV Angela Yee, Charlamagne the Guy. We are the Breakfast Club. We got some special guests joining us this morning. We have Cody and Tommy Oliver, the creators of Black Love. Welcome. Hello. <laughs> yes. Hello. Welcome Thank back. Thank you for having us. And still in love. <laughs> Very much so. Still in love. How More today pan- than then. How did the pandemic affect your relationship? Because some people got a lot stronger. Some people learned a lot more about themselves. Mm-hmm. Some, some people, people had a bunch of babies. All of the above. Some people don't like each other. Except that. <laughs> like all Except that. Baby. Okay, <laughs> we went into the pandemic with uh, twins that were a year and a half. So yep. there was no desire to add to that. <laughs> Mm-mm. Mm-mm, no. So I probably like spending time with her more than she likes spending time with me. And so I was happy. That's I was honest. good. Happy? And why don't you I like was. spending time with him? It's not that I don't like spending time with him. The <laughs> he pandemic, likes it more. The pandemic was, exactly. The <laughs> pandemic was harder on me from the get-go. I mean, mm-hmm. we work together. We live together. We have these tiny humans. We had no help with the kids for a long time during that period. But yeah, it was hard at first. So I would say it was a good period because... We, I, saw a therapist, Mm -hmm. and then he would see said therapist, and it was honestly amazing. So did you guys go together, or you went individually? No, so the therapist was her therapist, and then Mm -hmm. I would occasionally talk to the therapist, and honestly, I've said this there before, and I feel like I'll get in trouble for saying it, but... Her talking to the therapist was the best thing that ever happened in our relationship. And I will say that him talking to said therapist was the best thing that ever happened. Explain why. I want to know why. I know why. Yeah. Because the therapist told her she was wrong on things that she thought was right. And finally, you got your I told you so moment. Is that what you think? I'm talking to the it's gentleman, It's not about sir. being right or wrong. Bro, I'm not saying that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I mean, that was terrible. Yeah. So why was, it, why, why was it great that she seen the therapist? Why did it make the relationship better? Because we got to a place that it was just lovely is what it really comes down to. And so I think that there are different things that people need in relationships. And sometimes it's easy to say that, oh, everybody needs therapy. Or everybody needs this or everybody needs whatever. But sometimes one person needs something and that doesn't mean that it's a problem. The other person doesn't or people respond to things differently. It's like, look, I may have an iron, an iron deficiency. And so that means you got to start eating more spinach or taking iron supplements. no. But in this case, it was all about what I think you needed for you to better understand me in some ways. Mm -hmm. And I just think that what? So we will forever. I love this. I know. Y'all went, we got right (laughs) there. I'm like, like, this is so (laughs) fascinating. We will forever disagree on the fact. I I think therapy can benefit everyone. Mm -hmm. Now, there are folks that feel like they don't need it, don't want, don't want it. But I think it can benefit everyone. And so we will forever disagree because he's like, no, you like therapy. I don't. Okay, cool. So why was Mm -hmm. it beneficial? It was beneficial because it allowed me, first off, again, pandemic, right? We stuck together in this house. I don't have an outlet. And I don't want to go off on him, Mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And we got three little kids, so it's already just stressed for no reason sometimes. So it allowed me to talk through the things that were on my mind. Mm -hmm. It allowed me to, to... Re, to figure out healthy ways to communicate with mm-hmm. him, healthy ways to process the things that he, were annoying me. And uh, if you ask me what they were, I don't remember. I mean, this mm-hmm. is however many years mm-hmm. ago now. Um, but it it just allowed me to process without taking stuff out on him that I didn't need to. And then, honestly, him talking to her pretty frequently, I mean, I would say about once a month, um, allowed her to to just bridge the gap sometimes. See both sides of things. Yes, she mm-hmm. could talk to him and understand where he's coming from and better help me. And so for me, I, I think the full circle of it all, both of us talking to her was very valuable. I don't think that I want I don't to disagree see with that. her by myself because I think I need it and love it. Right. But it was very valuable that he also saw her. What were some of the, the, the problems or the things that were going in between your relationship that would cause you to, you know, possibly buck off on him? So... <laughs> <laughs> So as I said, we work together, we live together. Mm-hmm. We he's from Philly, I'm from Texas, and and there's a lot of things you can take from that. But just take the <laughs> the the stigma, right? Like East Coast hard tells it like it is, and I'm like soft, charming, sweet, you know. And not to say he's not sweet, but those personality differences are huge, both professionally and personally. Mm-hmm. Not to mention the fact that our our work dynamic is. Uh, complicated I'm not trying to be vague it's just it is a lot right oh really now he's filming me <laughs> our, our, our work dynamic is sometimes he's the boss like we're partners but there's a lot of things that he knows better than me 
And so the, it can get a little like, are you telling me to do this? Or are you suggesting that we... I was wondering we... because, you, you, know, you know, I taped Black Love with you guys yesterday. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Thank you for the opportunity. Mm-hmm. Oh, it, it's, it's, it, was, it was pretty good. <laughs> it was pretty good. That's all you... Come on. No, no, I mean, because the conversations were pretty yes. good. It was, yeah. it was, you know, it makes you think and, and talk and, and think about things you didn't want to think about. But I will say this, watching you guys together... Mm-hmm. Right, because he he might say put the mic on, right? Mm. But that's what he would usually say. But mm-hmm. since you his wife, mm-hmm. it's like a little put. The, it's no put the wife on, babe. It's put the put the mic on. Mm-hmm. And then I heard you say you put the mic on. <laughs> so then it was like it wasn't like a fight, but I could feel like the little uh-huh. like yeah. who you telling him put the mic on, nigga? You put the goddamn yeah, mic you're on. You're so right. Mm-hmm. A lot of and it, and it can be little microaggressions right. like that, and sometimes it's bigger. I mean, there's I'll give you a perfect example, mm-hmm. and this is one of those examples. I always say that Tommy knows a lot. Mm-hmm. He he knows a lot. He thinks he knows everything. I don't. Whatever. <laughs> but he knows a lot, so it's pretty close, and it's hard sometimes. Early on in our relationship, it would be like, like, why do you think you know better than me? When now, many years later, I realize he there's a lot of things. He, I, I'm humble enough, and I recognize that there's so much that he knows more than me. But in 2018, when I was pregnant with the twins... There was one thing in particular, I can say what it is now, but we, you know, have the show, Black Love Doc. We launched blacklove.com. We launched live events. Uh, We have several digital series. In 2018, when we were launching the site and going into the first Black Love Summit, Tommy insisted that I should not be editor-in-chief of the website. Now, this is my baby. This is like, I I knew what stories I wanted to tell on this site. telling you what to do. This is your baby. Not just tell you like that. And and, And and basically saying Mm -hmm. that I can't do it. What? What? Right? I'm pregnant with these twins. I can do anything. That's right. right. But ultimately he was right. Mm -hmm. And he was right because what he was seeing was from a business standpoint, you can't run this company, Black Love Inc. You can't direct this show, Black Love Doc, and successfully execute as as the editor of this website should. He was right. But at the time, I'm hearing him tell me something I can't do, not really explaining himself. That's the other part. He knows a lot, but he likes to just tell you what it is right. and not really offer, like, this is what I'm saying. I'm trying to get you to understand. No, he's direct. I you think-, think that you would receive that better from someone else? Because yes, sometimes I do. it's the person close mm-hmm. to you and it's hard to take it. Mm-hmm. Yep. And we had all of our kids in the first three years of marriage. And we got mm-hmm. engaged and married in a year and a half. So we, I'm honestly, we, we barely knew each other. Mm-hmm. So there was so much of a learning curve while he's telling me what I can and cannot do from a place of love and from a place of understanding. He's very good at business, but it just felt like you can't tell me that. It just mm-hmm. felt like, no, I have to do this. Mm-hmm. So you guys didn't know each other long, like you just said. So mm-hmm. how did you know he was the one and how did you know she was the one? Because you said you didn't know each mm-hmm. other mm-hmm. long. Mm-hmm. For for me, mm-hmm. it was funny. I had, a, I had this conversation with with Scoop recently, mm-hmm. and His cousin. yes, and I what Scoop? Batman he, Scoop? No, 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 oh. not, not, another Scoop. <laughs> another another Scoop. Who I made a movie called 1982, mm-hmm. and there's a character called Scoop, which is based mm-hmm. off of my cousin that Bokeem Wilbine played. Mm-hmm. Okay, and so but my my cousin Scoop, and we met in Toronto, and we hung out that. I don't know, three days in a row, and then mm-hmm. we got back to L.A., and then we hung out four days in a row, and then I called five people and said, unless something goes terribly wrong, I'm marrying this woman. But I also mm-hmm. called my cousin Scoop, and what I said was, I, he reminded me of this. He said that I told him that I met Claire Huxtable. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and for me, it was very much, she is somebody who I knew there was no doing any better. And so she's... An incredible person. She's really sweet and smart and supportive. We wanted a family together. We had shared values. And so it was, I knew there wasn't doing any better. And so at that point, it was about how do I figure out how to make sure I do my part? Mm-hmm. And it was just clear to me. Hopefully, she didn't say I met Bill Cosby. <laughs> yeah, who, who, who oh, want that one? <laughs> no, that's not it at all. No, what about you, <laughs> no, so it's a combination of what he just said. When we were in Toronto, we were at the Toronto Film Festival, mm-hmm. and Tommy had just premiered. 1982, which is semi-autobiographical. So to a certain extent, and I was someone, we're 29 at the time, I definitely knew I wanted to settle down and get married. So I'm looking. And because he made this movie that I hadn't seen yet, but I could read about it, like the articles and stuff, I knew a little bit about him and I could ask like deep questions, which was important to me because I didn't want no service level relationship. Um, And the film, you know, his mom in the film, it's his, well, in the film it's your mom too, Mm -hmm. but 
His mother um, was addicted to crack. And the movie is about that experience as a child. Um, And so there were things I could ask him about healing, about their relationship, about, you know, there's a character in the film, the dad, who is not present in real life. So there were things that I could ask Tommy about and really get to know him on a deeper level right away. You know, everyone always thinks that when you meet someone, that person's always got other things going Mm -hmm. on. So were both of you clear and single when you met? (laughs) (laughs) Okay. Uh Uh Uh-oh. All right. So Mm -mm -mm. I went to the Toronto Film Festival with this movie with my girlfriend at the time. Mm Mm-hmm. And the no, 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 (laughs) hold on, hold on, hold on. And so the day of the premiere, Mm -hmm. I broke up with her. Damn. Could you fly around to Toronto to watch this premiere? You broke up on the the day of the premiere, not even after. Did she get to go to the premiere? It's like an episode of The Bachelor. Go ahead. No, 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 no. no. (laughs) I I uninvited her from everything. Why? It was problematic. And so we weren't in in the best place and... It we woke uh it woke up on just some some craziness. Like honestly It's a stressful time for you. That's the Like it wasn't even that. It was like she was looking for something that wasn't there and just was it was just a what? She was like literally going through his phone that morning to be like, Who is this person? Who is this person? Ooh, not the day of the premiere. The day the morning of the premiere, I wake up to a friend who was a friend from film festivals. We had mm-hmm. been to Sundance together, we had been somewhere else. Mm-hmm. Somebody was trying to, you know, get into a party, Somebody asking about something. I know now, yes, so who's I'm, I'm a co-signing. a married friend mm-hmm. and she woke up and she was just like, Who is blah blah blah? Who is blah blah blah? And I'm like, Whoa. Like uh, I'm not I'm not doing this. Like mm-hmm. I'm not doing this. And I will happily pay for a hotel for you, pay for your flight home, but you are uninvited to the premiere, you're uninvited to the party, we're done. Mm-hmm. Like, actually done. And so it wasn't the sort of thing where Damn. we're breaking up to make up. Right. And had it been when I met Cody the following day, it wouldn't have mattered because I'm not that person. Mm-hmm. And so I had literally broken up with my girlfriend the day before Cody hit on me. Well, oh, he Lord. Did. Goodness gracious. But that said, we met the next day, and he you definitely... You broke up with your boyfriend, too? No, I didn't oh. have a relationship <laughs> of any kind at that time. Um, but we we met the next day, and he definitely, like, didn't... It wasn't like he was trying to holler. Okay. Okay, so I had to, like, put a little effort in. But I wasn't in that space. Like, I was there <laughs> doing business, and again, I had Going just broken up, up mm-hmm. with my girlfriend. And so it was like, yeah, she's clearly lovely, but... I wasn't yeah. even thinking about yeah, it. Your yeah, girlfriend right. just said, all right, I'm leaving. I'm taking a hotel and flight. That doesn't seem like that would have ended I'd have been right way. at that premiere. like. <laughs> so, no. <laughs> and Is Cody. This the one who, like, yeah. continued to. So, Cody didn't. Like she would have tried to fight you, Cody. She but so, so, wasn't she, even. Yeah. But, didn't so, she. I actually, I showed to Cody of. from this in the beginning. But she wound up stalking me for probably four months. Mm-hmm. And it was it was unfortunate. And so, wow. yeah. All right, well, let's not talk about her anymore. Just, <laughs> yeah. just No, it's, just, it's interesting because when you first meet Jeez. somebody, a lot of times they, there is things going on yep. that you have to clear out. Yeah. You know? But, but also, to your point, like, the next day, like I said, he wasn't really paying attention right. to me like that. And so it took us seeing each other a few times that day. Mm-hmm. And I'm really big on, like, you never know where somebody is when you meet them. Right. And true. so you can't take that personally. Not to say it don't hurt a little bit. It's like, come on, I know right. what I look like. Why are you not paying me any attention? But but we never know what situation someone is in. Yeah. So question. So, of course, you're doing a new uh, season of Black Love. comes out in June, correct? Yeah. Mm-hmm. In June. And you guys talk to so many different couples. Mm-hmm. Uh, celebrity couples, not celebrity couples. Mm-hmm. So what do you tell young couples that are, are starting to date and maybe getting married? What do you tell them? Because you've heard so many different mm-hmm. stories. You've mm-hmm. heard the highs, the lows, the maybes, the breakups and all that. Mm-hmm. So what do you tell those? There's a, a people that couple? want open relationships and mm-hmm. feel like that can work. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so... It really depends. So part of it, like the idea of an open relationship, like for for us, a core tenet for how we interview our couples is that we don't judge them mm-hmm. at any point. And so whatever works for them works for them. And it doesn't need to be something that we would be okay with or something that we would do in our relationship. And so that's a really important thing where if you're in a relationship with somebody, you're in a relationship with that person. And that's what matters. And sure, friends and family matter, but ultimately it's the two of you. And so... That matters, making sure that you don't have a bunch of uncommunicated expectations, Mm -hmm. which can destroy a relationship really quickly. And so it's 
we're together and I think you should be doing this and I'm judging you on that, but I've never said that. But I think I said it. I think I said some version of it. And so that's a really big problem. And then one of the other things that we've seen again and again is that the commitment to being committed, which sounds simple, it makes such a big difference. Mm -hmm. And so the commitment to making sure that you stay together, that you figure it out, because when you do that, there are things that you're not going to do, Mm -hmm. or there are things Mm -hmm. that you will work on on yourself to put your relationship in the best possible position to win, while you're also continuing to do your work because you can't change anybody else. You can only change yourself. And so as you continue to work and you push yourself, then you give your relationship the best chance of winning. How important is it to be honest about your past when you're with somebody, right? Because we've seen a lot of conversations lately about, you know, guys would be like, oh, well, if she's been like this in the past, I don't want her. And then I've seen people say, what happened in your past doesn't matter and I'm not discussing it. Mm. And so. Don't even ask me. So I want so to know what your thoughts I'm, on I'm, it. I'm more on the, the latter where it like for me, the there are pieces of us that contribute to who we are. And we can talk about some of those things. But mm-hmm. I don't want to think about anybody else. It's like uh, for from. What? So specifically that you don't want to think about exes. Correct. But one's path. Like, I just want to be specific about that part because there are experiences in life that contribute to who we are. That yes. I think that I think you're saying are important to. I agree. You know, you know what I realized with, with, with a lot of couples, even myself, I push out a lot of the negativity that's ever been in my relationship, mm-hmm. right? So, like, if um, if if my wife asked me something from the past, I don't remember. And it's not, and I think I don't remember because you I You blacked push, it out. <laughs> no, yeah, I do, but I push the negativity out so I don't have to deal with it. It's kind mm-hmm. of my way of dealing with trauma. Mm-hmm. Like, uh, you know, my wife, she got slashed, right? She got slashed and, and I think, like, uh, over 300 stitches, right? But I never remember that and I never talk about it because it hurts so much. Mm. So I can never detail what happened that day. She has to remind me. Does that happen in your relationship too? Like things that hurt you so bad you just don't think about, you don't want to discuss, you push it out? I think I have a different version of that where Cody will sometimes remember a situation or an argument in the details. And for me, it's once the argument's over, I'm good. Me too. Yes. Like seriously, and so it's like okay, it guys. Okay, uh, I, I'm, I'm glad Cody you. Go. I'm glad you are in agreement, and I understand. Mm-hmm. I'm, the, I'm not judging your approach, but it's interesting to see you connect on that because we did talk yesterday, mm-hmm. <laughs> and you know this is not to rehash, right? But it was interesting. Your wife was talking about, um, you know, if 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 she's unhappy with something, and this is me actually articulating that I feel the same. Yep, so. Yep. Mm-hmm. I'm speaking for both of us, Um, you know, but being unhappy with something or being frustrated by something and sharing it. Right. And then maybe you apologize or maybe you're like, oh, I didn't mean it that way. And like it kind of just gets pushed under and you don't talk about it again. But that doesn't always feel like a resolution for for me, for her. I don't want to say dare I say for women, but I think sometimes that can be the case where if if it's not resolved, then it just kind of piles up Mm -hmm. until you really because sometimes Feel it's a heard. deeper problem than that one issue. Yeah. It might be something that's been like building up or something that recurs and you want to make sure you get to like the root of and that you truly feel seen, mm-hmm. right? And it's not just like, oh, okay, I hear you. Sorry about that. Cuz sometimes know? guys apologize just cuz they don't want to argue too. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. But and so you know, that's not it really comes back. it always comes yes. back to do that though. Yes. That's, that's the really. point, right? <laughs> and that's the hard part, but you know why we do it because it's like I don't want to <laughs> argue. Mm-hmm. I want to watch television. I want to mm-hmm. go eat dinner. I want to go. But uh, there's Disney nothing World wrong with, with arguing because I always feel like to be in a relationship successfully, you have to know how to argue in a way that's productive. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Correct. Yep. I agree. But I think a lot of it also goes back to communicating and on both sides. And mm-hmm. so if I don't understand that the issue wasn't resolved mm-hmm. for you, mm-hmm. then I don't know that there's something else to continue to, to deal with or continue to work on. And so what? I mean, I hear you, but sometimes you'll just be like, I'm not talking about this anymore. I'm over it. Yes. You <laughs> You're over balls. it? You got a lot of balls if you could say that. Look, I ain't talking about this. No, no that's, not, that's, that's not what I do. You got a lot of balls. <laughs> uh-uh. I thought I had balls, but that's a big hole in there. <laughs> hey, whose side are you on? <laughs> <laughs> I'm Pick a side and stay there. I wish I had those balls. I'm not going to talk about it no more. But the interesting thing is, I mean, you guys have been married 20 Plus 21 years, 21 years mm-hmm. right? And mm-hmm. so to a certain extent, as frustrating as that may be, right, that, that thing that happens, at least for us, 
listening to couples who've been married 20 years discuss that and and get through it Mm -hmm. because the reality and this is part of why black love was important to us to explore and to showcase is the reality is in marriage sometimes you have an issue for 10 years Mm -hmm. right and then the 11th year you're like i can't do this no more you know when you finally actually align and understand Mm -hmm. where the other person is coming from and i'm not saying that's desirable but that's the reality Mm -hmm. it is And, and it's one of the things that like i really appreciated your interview like really appreciated and I actually learned quite a lot and from her as well because of a lot of what Cody's talking about it offered a different perspective that was an external perspective that mirrored uh, some of the issues that we continue to deal with and so for me I want to be the best husband possible I want to be who she needs as much as I can without changing or compromising my core, but I want to change as much as I'm able to, to make sure that we have a healthy relationship. And but that's so, why I love black love. And, and I said <laughs> this yesterday, it's good because I think I was the way that I was because I had nothing to look at. Mm-hmm. I had not, nobody ever talked to me about love and mm-hmm. relationships and couples. And a lot of times we have to figure it out. You mm-hmm. know? Mm-hmm. So if some things bother my wife, I didn't know how to deal with it mm-hmm. or I did not want to deal with it. Mm-hmm. And when I started figuring things out the right way, you start having a better relationship. Correct. That's why with, with Black Love, I think with so many different couples, you you feel and you hear how people deal with mm-hmm. different mm-hmm. things. Mm-hmm. And I think that's the best thing because the whole thing is communication, right? Mm-hmm. Even if, if it's hard, but you have to learn how to communicate. Some people Correct. yell and scream, and if they yell and scream and call your name, you don't want, you, you're defensive. You don't mm-hmm. want to mm-hmm. do that. But if you figure out that right place, it, it, it's great. And I, and I always say that me and my wife have been married 21 years. But the last 12 has been the best because we mm. figured it out. Mm-hmm. And it, it, it was, we really, what's bothering you? No, mm-hmm. no, we're going to stop everything. Let's figure this out. Let's talk to me. Even if it's a, a nasty conversation mm-hmm. with things that hurt and we got to talk for four or five hours. But that's what it was. I remember, um, and I, I mean, we talk about this in the book, and I hate talking about this. <laughs> when me and my wife were having sex, and I, I, I mentioned this yesterday, mm-hmm. it was all about me. I'm my only mm-hmm. child, so I'm pleased. And then see you. Mm-hmm. So it got to the point where my wife would fake an orgasm. And I used to think that I was putting it down, like, yeah. And then that day she told me, nah, I'm faking. What? Oh, my gosh. Pow, pow, shot. I, I cried. <laughs> I didn't cry in front of her. I cried in the car, though. I ain't gonna lie. But, you know, and I never asked her about it. I just was like, yeah, whatever. But then when we had the conversation of why, mm-hmm. and she felt like I was like a, you know, a porn star. I just put it in and went. And she was like, there was no foreplay. There was no romance. There was no this. And it really hurt, but it made our relationship mm-hmm. better. It made our mm-hmm. sex life better. But those are the conversations we need to have, you know? Yeah, absolutely. And you, you couldn't tell she was faking it? No, I couldn't tell. <laughs> but if I could tell, you think I would... But They've been together this. since teenagers. Uh, you know what I was thinking? Because, look, okay, so now that she allegedly isn't faking it anymore... Shut up. Do you feel the difference? Oh. Yes, I feel the difference. We have a better relationship. <laughs> no, but I mean, like, physically, you can tell. Yeah, absolutely. You know, but I'm not a girl. I'm not a woman, so I don't know what a fake. She orgasm probably was, was rolling her eyes like, yeah, oh, God. It, yeah, you know, ah, yeah, she's great. Screaming, oh, okay. you think you feel you, as a man? I thought I was doing my thing. Like I'm like, yes, long dick style. I just big dick energy. That's what I thought, but I realized it was not. But we worked on it. We good now. Move um, on. So uh, anyway, this is awkward, but so I see that when you guys have these. Uh, really in-depth conversations with people who I'm sure you both can relate to mm-hmm. in situations as well. And then you become friends mm-hmm. with mm-hmm. people mm-hmm. as well. So you've built up a, a community. So mm-hmm. um, who are some people that you feel like during the course of filming that you've really connected with? There's so many. And and but I know you you think on it while I say black love for us, we didn't, like I said, we didn't have our married parents. So it was a way for us to sort of build a marriage village, Mm -hmm. at least in the storytelling, like we're learning from them, but it's been really beautiful because so many people have become invested in us as a result. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, the first, go ahead, go ahead. Well, no, it's, it's exactly that. And, but it's also really great because again, yesterday we interviewed them. I learned stuff. That was our, I don't know, 250th interview. Mm -hmm. And I learned stuff from that interview. Mm -hmm. And you are people who I'm the I'm able to benefit from your journey and your vulnerability and we've had that in spades. So going back to season one, somebody like Erica and Warren Campbell. Oh gosh. Who yeah. have been We've become very close yes. with them. And Vanessa Bell Calloway mm-hmm. and, and Tony Calloway and mm-hmm. they're a great example. Not the story for another day, but we spent all of twenty sixteen arguing, arguing about our son's name mm-hmm. and ultimately I wanted a junior. She was like, nah. Ultimately <laughs> Vanessa 
I credit her for saying, like, give that man his junior, which I knew she was going to say. But, like, because she's a very traditional wife, Mm -hmm. ultimately his name is Brooks, which is my maiden name. But that was a gift that Tommy gave me after the fact. Nice. Um, But they, you know, they're amazing. Uh, Deval and Kadeen. Mm -hmm. uh, They're just so, like, it's great. Ryan and Sterling. Mm -hmm. uh, Sterling K. Brown and Ryan Bathe are just absolutely amazing. Um, have you interviewed couples that broke up that's no longer together? We have. So we've interviewed about 250 couples, mm-hmm. and there's probably been three, maybe three four. Three that we actually aired that yes, broke up. And three. then like one more after that. Did yeah. y'all see the problems at the time, or was it one of those things where it was like a shocky? I don't think we... There was only one interview that happened where I saw real issues. And they weren't honest about it. They uh-huh. didn't. They didn't break up, and so they're still uh-huh. together. <laughs> well, I mean, like, we can say it. I think there. if we're talking about the same people, okay, you're, you're. <laughs> we can say it because they were on the show, and it was obvious. It was clear, I and think. and so we'll unpack it a little bit. You know them. I feel like Who's I that? know it's okay. Barton Star Scott. Okay. okay. Uh, so we talked to them. Oh, I was Is that not about them. You were thinking no. Of? Well, oh, we, we can go with them. Well, I'll, I'll just. <laughs> I like giving content. I don't want to just throw somebody's name out there and be like, eh. Right. Uh, but we talked about the fact that there was infidelity in the relationship. We talked about the fact that as Tommy and I were having this conversation, we're thinking they're talking about years ago, but they were talking about years ago and recently. Oh, present. So yeah. it was unfolding before our eyes. Mm. In real time. In real time. It aired. So that's mm-hmm. why I'm like comfortable saying it's not like it's a secret. It aired. They're aware. And so we were talking about this. I was talking to your wife about this yesterday very much wanting to know how they're doing now because I don't know. And I think a big part of it is for us, it's always been about making sure we honor people's stories and Mm -hmm. handle them appropriately. And so it's never about taking things out of context or making things salacious. And it's It's about the real journey. Correct. And as you always say, it's about the hardest things that people go through and how they got through them. Mm -hmm. Who are you thinking of, Tommy? Yeah, I want to know. I I don't know if he said it publicly, so I'm not going to say it. No, they're, they're still together. Oh, he so he was, called me after. And, oh, no. They've said it since. Okay. They just did an interview. I actually watched it. Uh, ooh. Never mind. Just to, <laughs> We had a couple. We had a couple uh-huh. um, who actually I am very close to the wife um, who it seemed like there was infidelity. And during the interview, Tommy asked him explicitly and he said no. Yeah, because it was one of those things where he was talking around it and... It's for, for most of the interview, Cody does the talking. Like, I'll talk sometimes if there's a question or if there's something that sort of, I don't know, feels different. Mm-hmm. And I knew that it wasn't adding up. And I mean, I heard it too, but Tommy asked him and he said no. And I asked him point blank. And he was like, no. <laughs> mm-hmm. And so I let it go. I, I let it, I mean, I think I asked maybe one more follow up question and mm-hmm. it was clear that he wasn't willing to talk about it. And so I let it go. And then he called me. Uh, I don't know how long after. A couple months? Maybe, yeah. Maybe a year. And he, he apologized. Mm-hmm. He was like, look, man to man, I lied to you. Mm-hmm. Like, you asked me a question, and I lied to your face. And I I want to apologize. And I also want to ask if there are any people that you can connect me with who can help me through this journey. Mm-hmm. Because I want to be a better husband. Okay. I want mm-hmm. to be That's somebody who can figure out it. Yeah, it was. And so like I connected him with Neil Brown Jr., who talked about actually that's another one who yeah, became Neil very Katrina. very good friends mm-hmm. um because he talked about his journey coming back from infidelity I also connected him with Warren mm-hmm. and so cuz he talked about it as well in season 1 and but that was that was one where it was just uh he wanted to do the work he wanted to figure it out and I also appreciated that he he lied and he apologized not, not yeah. that he had to yeah. but just sort of an indication of the type of person that he was in the type of person he wanted to be. And they are still together. Yep. That's dope. Good. What about a thruple? We actually haven't. And um, <laughs> the short version is that, like, we've been, I don't want to say we've been approached. Like, obviously, lots of people reach out to us. There was a couple off of a, a reality show that reached out mm-hmm. who I think since have had, like, a lot of chaos. We've talked about it. And it's a combination of, you know, selfishly wanting to learn from couples, um, in, in marriages that we, you know, mm-hmm. that want to model after, right? Mm-hmm. Um, but it just never, and, and, and knowing our audience too, mm-hmm. like that's the other part, is still TV, is still business, like knowing our audience and seeing how they've responded um, in other avenues, our socials, et cetera, like it, it just hasn't been something that yep. 
but, we've wanted to But beyond explore. that, we've always been about the idea of black love being wherever and however people find love. Mm-hmm. And so we've been very intentional about it. It's a black person and however they find love. And so if it's an interracial couple, if it's a... Uh, have you had interracial couples? We, we have. have. Yeah, yeah. Well, absolutely. absolutely. Yep. What did y'all do? And, and what did... So what did, did the, we do any Because a, a lot of black people... I ain't gonna say all black people, but a lot of black people hate interracial yeah. couples. They, they and they, hate they, it being known as black love. Correct. But it was important to us from the jump because, in particular, um, we I look at interracial couples if those children are black. Absolutely. And I and we literally while we were conceiving of the show, it was like, man, I can't look my biracial friends in the face and mm-hmm. and ever suggest that their family, what their parents have, mm-hmm. isn't black love, right? That mm-hmm. they are not representative of black love. Like, it was literally Hello. like that. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I mean, and, and it was important to us. Going back and to so, season one, like Chris and Vanessa. Yes, yeah, so I was, like, trying to remember. Chris and Vanessa Spencer, which is hilarious because for years no one noticed that Vanessa wasn't black. <laughs> it was, like, three years later they were like, why is this Latina woman mm-hmm. on black love? And we were like, calm down. Or Ashley and Chia. Yeah, so Ashley and Brian Chia, he's um, Cam- Cambodian and mm-hmm. white, and she is definitely a black woman. Mm-hmm. Um... And I'm trying to, I don't think there are any other celebrity examples, but, so. but we definitely have done it many times. And the same thing with LGBTQ plus yeah. IA. And so, again, it's however people are finding love, we are in support of that. Because, of the, because we've been told that we can't. We've mm-hmm. been told that we're not deserving and we're not worthy. And that was the other part. We didn't want to create this series and this brand, Black Love, and and ever suggest that there's only one way. Correct. That and was a big part of it. We are also aware that, hey, here's a platform, and so we're not going to perpetuate the things that, the things that always were. And mm-hmm. so we're going to make sure that we're showing them how we know they should be portrayed Mm -hmm. and we're going to do the best that we can to make sure that we're seen as loving, happy couples in whatever form that takes. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Well, I look forward to the next season. And And which is the last season. The last season? Yeah. The last season. What? This is an ongoing thing. What's wrong with y'all? Not anymore. (laughs) It's an ending (laughs) thing. Black love as a whole, ongoing thing. Black (laughs) love, the docu-series. Is it? And so six seasons. Because, I mean, there's so many black yeah. couples. There's so many couples yeah. that, and like I said, I like this conversation and this talk because as a kid, we didn't have that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, we, we talk about basketball. Mm-hmm. We talk about, you know, chicks. Mm-hmm. We talk about mm-hmm. everything else in, in, in barbershop. <laughs> Who says the barbershop, that word still? No, in the barbershop, that's what you talk about when you're <laughs> young. You talk about everything. You talk True. about your favorite player. You talk about this. You talk about that. But you don't talk about black love. So mm-hmm. I felt like it was an outlet where you could watch and, you know, get some advice. So and why? It's, and it so, still is. You can watch all five yeah, now. You can six go back seasons. and watch so it. After Correct. The season, what, what's number seven? Why? You so, guys so, have so more it, 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 series coming. The thing. We do. Mm-hmm. So Black Love Inc. is a company is thriving and we're still going to continue to do cool things. Mm-hmm. So we've got the live Podcast events. Network, live yeah. events, uh, virtual events. All of our socials are Digital Black series. Love Plus. App. Mm-hmm. Uh, and you can also see all six seasons on the Black Love Plus app or on Hulu or on Discovery Plus. And so, but a big part of it is... I, I, want, to, I want him to tell us, well, who did you see yesterday when we did the interview? Did you see a PA? Did you see a gaffer? Did you see... No, it was four of us. Yes. yes. Four of us in the room. No and no. For every and single so interview. For, so you're wow. doing it yourselves anyway. For so. all six seasons, for all 250 interviews, it's a production crew of two. It is the only broadcast show on mm-hmm. TV with a production crew of two people. They kicked and my baby out. Yeah, they said the baby couldn't be there. <laughs> That's not what? exactly how <laughs> that happened. Messing, messing, that is what happened. No, <laughs> you guys put the baby <laughs> in the hallway. We told your assistant <laughs> to leave. Well, kindly, kindly. And then you were like, wait, the baby's here. So we were like, cool, cool, cool. She can go in another room. <laughs> <laughs> the baby was by herself in the other room? The baby was by herself in the other yeah. room. She was trapped in, though. She was good money. But the whole reason... Just joking, my assistant. For anybody out there, no, my assistant was watching the baby. <laughs> she was. <laughs> but the whole reason is that it's meant to be an intimate conversation conversation and it's basically two couples at dinner where you can talk about things honestly and openly Mm -hmm. and once you have a big production where you've got the ad over there and you've got the gaffer there and you've got a bunch of pas running around Mm -hmm. it feels different and so as we've continued on this journey we're busy we got a lot of stuff going on and it's a hard thing to figure out how to manage and And we have three kids at home correct Mm -hmm. and it's also cody and trying I have to, to manage him, okay? I got the talent and the and the other talent. Because my, my 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 schedule is nuts. Because <laughs> she's the director, but I'm the DP, gaffer, cam op, 
sound person, like all these things. And so it requires. That's why he should have done the mics. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> so it requires both of us. And we are incredibly proud of what the show has done. Mm-hmm. And you wouldn't believe some of the feedback that we've gotten about mm-hmm. how impactful it's been for, for couples and for their relationships. And for individuals, and for singles. Individuals, yeah. for people mm-hmm. who said that it helped to prepare them for a relationship or that it saved their marriage or whatever it may have been. And so we're incredibly grateful for that, but also for the sake of our marriage and our space. Mm-hmm. It's We've very fortunately done what we came to do. Mm-hmm. And so we are going to stop while we're ahead and focus on the rest of Black Love. And also, I got a whole other company. Like, we got confluential so films. So you guys both have it, Y'all found another young couple mm-hmm. to do the interviews that y'all did, and y'all still EP it, y'all still do it, and y'all still help the people. So there are more Black Love-related series coming. Yeah. Okay, all right. Yeah. All right. Black Excellence? So, uh, that one's TBD. Okay. <laughs> All right. Well, we appreciate you guys for joining us, and yes, I'm sure you guys pleasure. will be touching back in when it's actually announced the, the date when it, when it comes. When, when, what is the date? Y'all have a date yet or not yet? Sometime in June. Yeah. Sometimes yeah. in June. Yeah. Well, we appreciate you guys. We had to get them up here now, yeah, because they work too much there on the West Coast. So okay. Don't, don't be on this side too much. Did Emmy cry during the interview? Actually, a little. At the end, at yeah. the end, he got a little teary eyed. Yeah, that was a tough one, right? Because. I think the last thing they said was they asked uh, me, you know, how I felt about Gia, look in Gia's eyes mm-hmm. and tell her, which I did. And, um, you know, I, I'm not too I'm not too long when it comes to words, but then Gia had to do me. Oh, my God. Mm-hmm. But <laughs> oh here's the God. thing. Both of them went on for like five minutes each on the other one. <laughs> like usually people no, like, like, I just love minutes. the way that you have supported our family. No, nah, these two gave whole speeches. <laughs> OK, we'll save that for you. You can use it at the I next. I can't renewal. imagine what Gia could have said about Emmy. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> but no, was good. She, went, she went in, man. She made me tear. I, I can see what he eyes. would say about her because he's really blessed. Oh, she but, went in. She yeah. did. It was yeah, probably twice as long as his. Yeah. Did she have an orgasm to it? <laughs> <laughs> you know what y'all should do, so You know what you should do? Y'all should go to uh, Ye Show Lip Service. Oh, okay, yes. okay. Y'all should do that one good time and, it's, and talk about it. I'm not even going to tell you what it's about, but you should go I to, know what uh, it's uh, about. Gia's going to go, gonna go on the show, too, but I, I want Gia to go without me. No, I said I want Gia to go I without think you. I have a better conversation. And if they give We're going to actually have her enact what her orgasms, oh her fake God. orgasms. <laughs> yeah, she can, she can show the fake one, yeah. And if they give Gia a little liquor, oh, my God. <laughs> Listen, I've been drunk with Gia before. <laughs> <laughs> my goodness. All right. Well, thank you guys for joining us. It's Cody and Tommy Oliver. It's The Breakfast Club. Good morning. 